Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad to hear this Monday morning. A great way to start a week right here watching Panhandle Outdoors. We have a very special show today and a special guest. You're just going to be amazed at some of the things you're going to see today. But first, our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin and Highway 77. Folks, it's going to be a warm day. The lowest is going to be is 56 degrees, high of 67. Water temperature is still at 58 degrees, though. No effect on it. But we do have some showers uh, scheduled according to the National Weather Service. But uh, let's take, take a look at our uh, Monday moon forecast. We want to always uh, start off Monday on that. This is February the 16th. We're looking at it. We got a, a, a dark moon coming up uh, Thursday. New moon's going to start Friday night. We start, uh, it's sort of uh, waning on out now, but it's going to start waxing up this coming weekend. So have some dark nights. And if you're going to be out there floundering at all, because you saw those pictures the other day, of those flounder in February. If you get in a flounder gig and you let me know, uh, that's interesting. Tide chart uh, brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery. We're looking at a low tide at 414 and a high tide at 625 there on the screen. Today is the 16th of uh, February. Hope everybody had a great Valentine's Day, but strong tides today. But now this weekend, you're looking at some neap tides, not a lot of activity on the tidal flow. So be watching our weather. Uh, long range forecast if what kind of wind you're going to be having if you're planning some weekend activities. All right, marine forecast today should be coming out of southwest about seven miles per hour. Let's take a quick break and get back with our guest today. Now, oh, welcome back and welcome Bobby Smith. Good morning, Coach. <laughs> We've been trying to get him on for a couple of years now. We're not going to go back all the trouble we've had. You've been uh, had all kind of things going on in your life, but welcome. Glad to be here. Listen, we we got to get started. We're going to talk about fishing. We're going to sort of uh, center on bass fishing, but just keep in mind now, fishing is fishing. And uh, a lot of these things Bobby's going to share with us going to be amazing. And to me it is. And I've been around all my life. Bobby, how'd you get started fishing? I started fishing when I was barely old enough to walk with my grandfather. Yeah. He'd put me on his shoulders and he'd wade through the swamp, set me on a stump, hand me a cane pole and a can of worms. Uh -huh. And I, I grew up learning to love fishing, going with him. And as I got to be an adult, was able to drive and finally got my own boat, uh, I did all kinds of fishing, freshwater, saltwater, and everything else. Uh, yeah. I even commercial floundered for several years. But uh, I started bass fishing when I was about 22 years old, seriously. Uh -huh. uh, I'd done a little bit of it, but I'd cast a couple hours and get out the worms and crickets. But uh -huh. uh, I, I got serious about it in 1974. I joined Bass Angler Sportsman Society, and I'm now, of course, a life member. I've been ever since 74. Yeah. And uh, I just I fell in love with the, the bass fishing. It kind of replaced my playing baseball because I got into these tournaments. I entered my first tournament in 1974, and the competition is what actually drives you. Uh -huh. More than just the fishing, it's the competition. And you, you grew up in this area and fished this area for your whole life? All man. my life. Yeah. I've been here since I was three years old. Okay. Well, listen, uh, uh, we, we don't know really uh, what, what drives people to, to win these tournaments or what gives them ability. I, I think it just people have a natural gift like in fishing like they do in, in playing ball and different things, music and all. I think it's a gift in, in the DNA or whatever. Uh, you, uh, what was the deal? Well, let's do, let's go and get us clear this up. The deal you made with your wife years ago, <laughs> <laughs> just briefly. What I think I wrote down. You, you, she said, "When are you going, honey? When are you going to quit fishing or what? Are we bass fishing?" Well, I retired from my job after 31 years, and I was only 49 years old, but I was still fishing. She said, "When are you going to retire from fishing?" I said, "Well, I said I'd like to win 250 bass tournaments and 50 Anger of the Year awards and." Maybe a quarter of a million bucks, you know, because I just fish these local things. I can't yeah. go to the national, the big money yeah. tournaments. But I said, when I accomplish those things, I'll think about it. Okay, okay now I wrote down, <laughs> you said 250 tournaments. You've won 253 tournaments. Last right. Saturday, won my 253rd tournament. All right, 50 <clears throat> angler of the year. You've won that 52 times. Last, last year, I won the Southern Bass Anglers and the Deer Point Team Trail. That made 52 of those. Okay. Then and this year, pretty soon now... I should hit that quarter of a million dollar you're, mark. You're at 246000 right now. 
Right. This is, and he worked 30 years, so it's not like he paid A lot of years. Uh, yeah. Small time, you know, a yeah. few hundred here and a few hundred there. <laughs> I think the most I've ever won in one day was like 5,500. Wow. Actually, a two-day tournament at Lake Seminole. Yeah. But, yeah, so I'm going to run out of excuses <laughs> somewhere about halfway through this year, if I have a decent year at all. Well, well what was the total number? Now, you, this, your record-keeping is what's phenomenal. Of all the things you've done, the record-keeping just it blows my mind. What, what's the n number of bass you've caught? that you have record of? I have documented right here in this ledger. As of yesterday, I caught number 41,400. 41,400, okay. I caught 15 yesterday right. in the river. So you're well uh, on your way to ride a fish so, bass. Well, I had decided I've got to set another goal to keep my wife off yeah. of me a little longer, so now I want to catch 50,000 yeah. before I quit. I thought it was 50,000, <laughs> but it's 250,000 what it was, $250,000. Dollars, I'm talking Dollars. about numbers now. I'd like to catch 50,000 bass before I quit. Okay, well, <laughs> okay. Let's look. Uh, we've got a picture. The biggest bass you've ever caught been right here at where? Right there at Deer Point Lake Deer behind Point the house. Lake. Check this <laughs> 10 pounds. 10.67. 10.67. That's a healthy bass. And people say, not a big bass at Deer Point Lake, but you proved them wrong. Well, that was the best one, and uh, that's the biggest one I've, I've caught, period. I've caught two more over 10, but yeah. not at Deer Point. Yeah, and that one's still up there. Somebody wants to catch him again. Oh, he's still there. <laughs> and, uh, I presume. I hope nobody hadn't <laughs> taken him home. <laughs> and, you, you know, you want to, in the early years, uh, at first, people bass fish many years ago just you know, caught them and ate them, but then the mm -hmm. Bass Anglers Sportsman Society really got people releasing the bass. They really did. I started in 1978 voluntarily releasing my fish because of what I was reading in Bassmaster Magazine, uh -huh. and it took me to 1983. It took me five years of having people watch me turn mine loose, mm -hmm. telling me I was crazy, uh -huh. before they saw the fishing declining, mm -hmm. and I got the clubs all the local clubs to vote in live release approximately 1983. Okay, I did not know that part of history. I knew it was that era, and it was it didn't happen overnight. <coughs> a lot of you know a lot of old school folks just wanted to, and they did. Hey, you crazy letting that thing go? And so you were on the cutting edge of that of that catch and release. Exactly. Now, to my knowledge, I'm yeah. the first one here that ever released a bass that was weighed in in a bass tournament. Okay, let's let's quickly. We're just going to jump around all kinds of stories. I, I told the folks about the. The last tournament one uh, last Saturday, uh, uh, the bass, the winter trail over here at White City about you, mm -hmm. how cold it was. <laughs> Tell that story real quick about it. <laughs> well, uh, I wanted to see if we could repeat a pattern from last year. And to do that, we had to run approximately an hour at 60 miles an hour with it 33 degrees. And my grandson says, I'm all for it. We had fun last year. Let's do it again. So. So y'all put in a White City and ran 55 miles, you said, up the road? I went 55 miles to my first stop and about 66 to the last stop. Okay. I'm just hitting spots Yeah, along about, the river. You're going about 60 miles an hour? I had to, I, my boat would do 67, okay. but I backed off to 60 to conserve fuel. And uh, okay. there's not a whole lot of windshield difference between 60 and 67, but there's a whole lot of fuel difference. <laughs> That's cold. You didn't get cold? Not bad. You can dress for it. They make uh, good good clothes nowadays, snowmobile suits. I have a motorcycle helmet, and I've never owned a motorcycle in my life, but it works real good in that boat, too. All right. We're going to take a break. We're going to talk about how he, this pattern, how it paid off. Let's take a break. We'll be right back with Bobby Smith. Right, welcome back. Sitting with Bobby Smith. Talking about that distance they ran from White City up there way toward Wee Wall by road that's only 20 something miles, right? Probably about 20 miles. But you've got a great point. It's 55 miles by water because what happens? you got to go. Well, I ran a little above Wee Wall before okay. I started, but you have to run 16 miles east through yeah. Lake Wimico yeah, before Wimico, you ever hit the Appalachian River. Jackson River, and then. Then you have to turn north. Yeah. That's what. And then it actually makes a more yeah. than 90 degree, it turns back to the northwest. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, now listen, Bobby got this log and it keeps a record of everything. Here's a classic case of why this record pays off now. This tournament we we're just talking about, uh, now all these other guys fishing the tournament, they're fishing for the uh, largemouth bass. Mm -hmm. But you had found and you had a record of, uh, tell us what, what happened. Well, every year in February, the spotted bass, which has become a pretty well established in the Apalachicola River, and they're getting a little heavier, seems like. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have a particular pattern that they get on upriver in the month of February. It's a staging pattern just before they go spawn. And this is when they're the biggest that they are all year because they're full of row. They're real fat, like uh -huh. little footballs. Mm -hmm. And last February, we made the same run. It wasn't quite as cold, <laughs> but we made the same run. 
and we finished second to Alan Courtney and Ray Raines. Uh-huh. Uh, they caught a kicker that day, a big largemouth that weighed six eighty something, almost seven pounds. Mm-hmm. And we only caught one largemouth that day, about three and a half pounds. We filled out the limit with the spots, and we had fourteen. I think it was fourteen sixty five last year, uh-huh. and this year just about everything at White City has been being won with less than that. Uh-huh. So I told my grandson if we could catch five spots the same size as those we caught last year, I said we might win this thing. He said let's go for it. Uh-huh. So we made the run up there to the exact same places through the exact same baits, one year apart, and weighed in fourteen fifty two. Okay, that's a picture right here. These, that, these are the ones. That, uh, this is you and your grandson. I'll tell them your grandson's name. Austin Rhodes. Okay, Austin is going to be just like you. He's going to love fishing. But look, that's some that's some pretty bass right there. And they're healthy and they're, they're all fat, aren't they? They're all about the same. Uh, uh-huh. Those uh-huh. average 2.9 pounds if you divide it out. Uh-huh. And the biggest one weighed 299. Okay. We didn't have a three pounder. All right, so you saw that now. <clears throat> but of course, because you keep such good records and all, we're going to, on this bottom picture here, this is last year's tournament. Exactly. And you were fishing the same spot, same place, same weekend, basically. Same weekend. And, and here's your record. Here, here's what happened last year. Uh, uh, y'all got y'all actually. Uh, we were second place. Second, yeah, y'all second place. But look at the same. That's the same kind of. Mm-hmm. That, that's amazing. Yeah, those so, nice fat pre-spawn fish. Yeah. So that shows that shows what <laughs> happens when you when you keep great records. And put your log book over here if you will, I don't, folks. This this is a this is a. Uh, you got cash. That's old. It's about to fall apart. It's <laughs> just this, a ledger, something right. I could get a lot it's, of data in. Okay, look at here. It's page after page. Look at here. It's page after page, and uh, look at the detail on this. Uh, you're a detail guy. Uh, this is this is incredible. And how many entrants can you put on each page? There's 39 fishing trips on each page of that book. And I, I have no idea how many pages is 39 in there. 39 on a, uh, and you've got. Tell us what you put on here. I put the date, whoever went with me, the bass we called, have the largest one, then the best time of day, the place and lure, and uh, sometimes I'll put a little comment if, if the weather or the water conditions or anything made a difference that day, I'll try to note that. So uh, uh, What this does is this gives you seasonal patterns, and yeah. that's what drives a bass. A bass does the same thing year after year after year, and uh, by me- writing it down, mm-hmm. You can remember it. Helps mm-hmm. you to remember it. Mm-hmm. If you forget it, go look it up. Yeah, uh, this, this is unbelievable. I mean, I, how can you read that? I mean, that, that's like a di- with, with glasses, <laughs> <laughs> with strong glasses. And, and I know, could read it in my younger days. Now it takes glasses. <laughs> uh, me too. Uh, let me interject this. Well, we talk about this before the show. Uh, fishing is fishing, and and you know, fish have patterns. So, mm-hmm. and you you saw water fish growing up, and and redfish a lot of times do the same kind of pattern. So mm-hmm. when people and I, I haven't. I wish I'd have done this in all the years I fished uh, with uh, with the different fish because this is so valuable. And it, because you know you think that you remember it, but you don't remember ten years ago where you fished and all. But this you do now by writing it down. It will help you to remember. Yeah. It. What year? What year did you start? He said it started in 1974. <laughs> Actually, it started in a smaller book, and that uh-huh. book only held eight years. Uh-huh. I knew I had to get a bigger book, so this picked up about 83. Three, eighty-two, or eighty-three. Oh, so you got a smaller from program. there to the present. I hope I live long enough to fill this one up. I got several more years to go. <laughs> you, you wrote down who you fishing with, Johnny Kirkland. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You'll well, see his name on there a lot. Mark We've been fishing Thomas. together since junior high school. Have you really? Right. That, that's a lot of fun, isn't it? Oh yeah. Uh, okay, we're gonna. What we're gonna do? Uh, we got some more pictures and all. Uh, let's look at your, your grandkids. You know, we always got to show. <laughs> yeah, family, everybody talks family about pictures. Uh, I tell them it, it's hard to keep doing this like I've done. Uh-huh. I fished 48 tournaments last year. That's and that's a lot way. harder to do than it was when I was 20 years younger. Uh-huh. But that's my four grandchildren right there on my 62nd birthday oh, last good October. And as you can see, my baby granddaughter is about to be 12. One's about to be 16, mm-hmm. and the other two are 20 and 22. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I'm getting on up there. That's, that's great. And... Uh, and your grandson fishes with you a good bit. When he right, he started, he fishes the winter trail with me. Good deal. And uh, that, this is his biggest fish yeah, to date. He caught that out of Lake Talcon about two years ago. Uh, it weighed almost seven and a half pounds. And you it? fish a lot of Lake Talcon, don't you? I love Lake Talcon. It's, it's one of my very favorite lakes. We talk about it a lot. That, that's unique. See, that, bad, that bass is as fat as those spotted bass were. 
That's a pre-spawn fish from Lake Talquin. Uh-huh. And what month is this? That was would have been in, I believe, March or April. I, okay. I could look back here and tell you exactly. But yeah. anyway, I think it weighed 7.3. Wow. And we, we're right. And what we're going to do, we're going to take a break. We'll come back and talk about the different stages and, and uh, the best time to bass fish and, and where to go when the rain's doing this and that. So let's take our final break. We'll be right back with Bobby. <laughs> All right, welcome back to with Bobby Smith, bass angler extraordinaire. Let's take a look at our fishing game forecast real quick, brought to us by Mark Coward of Edgewater Beach Realty. Our time this morning is from 9.41 to 11.41 tonight, 10.10 uh, to 12.10. So uh, real quick, Bobby, uh, we, we mentioned this. What about, you know, some people think all that fishing time is a bunch of baloney. What, you, what do you think? What do you think? I didn't pay it any mind for a lot of years, but over the last 10 or 15 years, I've started paying more attention to it because... There's something to it. Now, there's yeah. other factors. Uh -huh. Weather, tides, if yep. you're fishing tidal water, can influence it a lot too. But mm -hmm. with everything equal, That's you're, you, you need yeah. to be in a good area during those times. And you're hearing it from an expert right here. It's talking about an expert, I was looking at this. This is the front page. This is back page. And what it has listed here is the Anger of the Year Award. Now, that's, you know, that's whoever catches the most uh, pounds in, in that club for the whole year. And this is something to be proud of. It started 1976. That was the first one. Uh, all these years, I mean, 81, 92s, and I mean, that's two full pay. How many, year, how many times did I have a year? 52. 52 times. That's something to be proud of. That's the thing I'm proudest of, I yeah. guess, of everything, because that's consistency, and that's what yeah. I strive to be. I strive to be consistently competitive. Yeah. Nobody is going to win every time. Yeah. I don't care who you are. There's yeah. too much competition out there, but uh, I want to be consistently competitive. Well, when uh, I show up, I want them to know they've got to beat me. Got to work. And then if yeah. they do beat me, you can bet your boots. I'm going to walk by and shake their hand before I leave because well, they earned it. Yeah, and I've, I've, I know what I have to put into it. I've observed it. <laughs> that in these bass weigh-ins had a good camaraderie with the bass fishermen. Ab absolutely. And, and you're talking, we have some good bass fishermen in Florida Panhandle. We surely do. There's some good, there's some good ones out there's there. There's some good ones in southwest Georgia, too, when you go to Lake Seminole. <laughs> yeah, you, you, yeah, Lake Seminole and Lake, Lake Taco. Speaking of... Uh, uh, Lake Taquin, uh, th you're talking about some big bass coming out of Lake Taquin, uh, and, and uh, March is a good month too, isn't it? When it's about to hit March. Any time from, to me, from March till the end of June is the prime time over okay. there. Uh, catch them in the pre-spawn, the spawn, mm -hmm. and then the post-spawn is fantastic on Lake Taquin. Uh -huh. Now who is this right here? But that's myself with uh, one of the nine pounders. I caught three over nine out of Taquin last uh -huh. year. I've, I've had problems up there catching a 10 pounder. I hear so much about them up there. And over the last yeah. three years, I think I've caught six over nine, and the big, yeah. biggest one was 983. I guess you need to fish more or something. I, I don't, I don't go it. over there that often. <laughs> that's that's the problem. It, it's too yeah. far to to go that often for just a one day yeah, that's trip. That's another nine one. That was the, a 983. That Now, that was caught in a Thursday night tournament. Oh, my a, goodness. A three hour tournament. And we weighed in a three fish limit, three fish, not five. Three yeah. fish limit that weighed 23.31 that night. On a Thursday night? On a Thursday night. Wow. There were 14 boats fished for only three hours, and five boats brought in a fish over eight pounds. Oh, my goodness. That'll tell you a little something about Lake Talquin, the quality of the fishery wow. there. And yeah. we didn't even get big fish with that 983. It took one over 10 that night to get big fish. You, you didn't win big fish with Did that? Did not get big <laughs> fish with that. <laughs> All right, let's talk real quick about people that were fishing in general. What, what are some good... Uh, good times and bad times to fish. Uh, you know, we're, we're talking about the condition of the water, water rising and falling. How, tell us some pointers. Well, when you're fishing a river, it's it's always subject to the water level. If you're fishing upriver, if you're fishing downriver, it's subject to the tides. Mm -hmm. There's just a lot of factors that, that go into it, and it's stuff you just learn yeah. as you go along. And by writing it down, it helps you to, yeah. to learn it. If you go upriver, you don't catch anything. The water was high and muddy and all in the woods. Write it down. Next uh -huh. time it's high and muddy and all over the woods, go the other way. And, uh, do, do you do you catch more fish on a falling river or a rising river, or does it matter what? I'd rather have it stable. Stable. Stable is best. We're falling yeah. is okay. Rising river, stay home. Yeah, <laughs> you know and that's odd because usually, uh, growing up and all, my dad liked to get, because that water rising up in the sloughs. He liked to get up in those sloughs and fish. And what back in the day. Well, but it's different now. I've heard brim fishing is good. I don't brim fish yeah. anymore, other than a little fly rotting at night up at Deer Point. But mm -hmm. uh, the uh, cat fishing is good on rising water. But uh -huh. bass, largemouth bass, just shut off on that's rising right water. 
I think the main thing is they scatter. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. right right now the spotted bass are easier to catch than the largemouth, so that's what right. I've been targeting. What are some of your, just quickly, some of your favorite lures and colors and all, just in general? I throw whatever they're biting. Yeah. My garage looks like a tackle shop. <laughs> you go <clears throat> top water, you worm it, or how, how, I, whatever's happening right now, I'm catching most everything on deep crankbaits. Yeah. Something run ten foot or deeper. Yeah. And uh, Carolina rigs. That's one of my. That's probably my best money maker I've ever had is a Carolina the rig. Carolina rig. That Carolina rig lizard is deadly. And then in the warm weather of the months, I swap the lizard for a trick worm. Okay. You know, but that Carolina rig has probably made me more money than any other one bait. Yeah. But I still throw a lot of the real old baits that most people don't throw anymore. The old snagless sally. Yeah. It takes three or four dump trucks to haul all the fish <laughs> off I've caught on a snagless sally. <laughs> That's a good one too. The old Rebel Super yeah. R that hadn't been made since about 1980 something. Yeah, you can hardly find them out of garage sale anymore. <laughs> I've still got probably eight or nine dozen of those. That's cool. Uh, color, you like, what about your colors? Uh, Depends on the water. Okay. I look at the water yeah. and uh, what looks good to me generally looks good to the bass. Uh -huh. And I've had people check me with one of those color selectors that uh -huh. you drop in the water at a certain depth and it's supposed to tell you what color the bass can see. Uh -huh. I had a guy bring one of those one day over on Lake Talquin, and everywhere we went, he'd ask me how deep is it going to be here, and I'd tell him how deep the top of the ledge was. Uh -huh. He said, what color are you going to throw? And I'd tell him and he'd drop that thing in the water to that depth and he said you're right oh it man. never failed yeah. just from i learned it from trial and error yeah, yeah. but by the, there there's something to it okay Real it's not just a gimmick but okay we're about to run out of time one quick question you like to fish up in the structure or down in channels or depends on where the fish are where right now they're them? off they're offshore right now they're not around anything they're just sitting on sandbars sitting on sandbars <laughs> well, by the way i got a thousand more questions we have to get you to come on another time be glad. We can't to. wait several more years, okay? Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, buddy. Enjoyed it. And Thank good you. Fishing. All right. So Appreciate great to have Bobby Smith here, one of the local guys who's just caught uh, 40,000 plus bass. Thank you for coming on, Bobby. Sure. Folks, don't forget tomorrow's show now is going to be a great video on the agony and ecstasy of hunting. You're going to really enjoy it. So uh, thank you all for watching Pan Hunt Outdoors. Do something good for someone else today, and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle On Tours with Winston Chester. Panhandle On Tours features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle On Tours.